We've never ever traced them. Never ever tracked them down. I'm looking to meet someone like who lives around here called Little John. So that's one that lives in the cave. Right? She was like, "Be careful." She said that a few times. Would you call yourself a recluse now? I'd say that I'm coming out of reclusion. Ten years of living in the cave. Welcome to the Department of Information. We had heard about a caveman living in the remote bush of the South Island, so we were searching the outskirts of Dunedin to find him and his cave. How do we, if he's in his cave, do you like knock on the tape? Damn. Good question. All we knew was his name was Little John and that a letterbox marked the entrance to the cave. Holy fuck, why do we not bring water? So, with almost no preparation, we headed into the bush to find him. Yeah, that does look like more cavey that side, eh? But it wasn't going well. How's the search going, Louis? While the search had failed, we knew we'd return to find Little John the Caveman. We were back in the South Island, this time to document Dunedin's student culture. Come on, England! Oh! That's passing. That's passing. But we hadn't forgotten about Little John. G'day. I'm, I'm looking to meet someone like who lives around here called Little John. So that's one that lives in the cave, right? Yeah. yeah. So, I don't have a contact number, but I know his name. Yeah, okay. So if you go back down that road, you just go around the corner a bit, and you can see there's like a track by a bridge. Yeah. That leads up to his cave. Great, thank you very much. Park on the right, the grass, and then there is a track. There is a track. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Never mind. Look, in the distance, there's a bit of a track. We're looking for someone who apparently lives around here called Little John. Little John, is that the fellow that walks in and out of Moscow? He's up the valley up and down there. Do you know which way to walk to find that? No, we don't. Ah. We've never ever traced him. Never ever tracked him down. Hi there, um, I was just in Foursquare and I was asking um, how to find a guy called Little John. Oh, okay, is there a different bridge? She was like, be careful. She said that a few times. <laughs> and I was like, thanks, and she's like, be careful. Finally, we found the letterbox and made our way up the track, ready to meet the caveman. We found a spot, but he's not here, so we're gonna come back another day. He's got a letterbox, so we're gonna leave a little note. Hopefully, we'll meet him soon. One more time. Who and yeah? Who who are you? Hi, my name's Little John. Uh, I'm well, I'm known as Little John. My name's Russell Tingle. Uh, I live here in Outram Glen. How long have you lived in the cave? About ten years. And what's that been like? Wonderful. Watch out for this one. Can you describe what your place is like? Beautiful, I guess. Would be the only word for it. Nature that's not being used by man for anything other than just to let it regenerate. We're going to go down this bit here, which is a little bit slippery, so you, you need to hold on with your hand. With one hand there. Composing songs as I like to do, uh, some of them are long love songs. I call this spot uh, the love song spot. Or, is it? Now, you've got to watch your ass, guys, because we're going into a really hazardous environment now. So every step is critical. Yep. If you slip now, it's going to be, you yep. know. Yeah. This area did wash away, and it took my espresso machine with it. So I'm going to have to get another espresso machine, but I think I can get a better one. Yeah. Now, this chair was brought here by a friend of mine who likes to sit in the chair. He managed to carry it all the way up the track. So where are we headed now? We're, we're going up to the cave itself. So do you have a few different spots in the bush? 
Yeah, this is the cave here. At the moment, I have the problem where we've just had the biggest flood I've ever had, and uh, the water was right up to to where your feet are. And How did you feel when it flooded? I was exhilarating, yeah, it was really exciting. What I'm going to do now is uh, make a new mattress of them. What I do is I grab a handful of them and then chop them off with the axe. Okay, so once I've collected a bunch, I lay it out in the cave to make the mattress by sitting down in my bed. <laughs> Do you sleep well? Very well. It's a perfect place to sleep. Nothing can bother you here, unless you're afraid of spiders. Do you have dreams? Yes, of course. There are people dream when they sleep, but... I've had quite vivid dreams of St. Leonard's Primary School. Do you enjoy school? School? Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> there was a lot of trouble at schools. I found the system too slow for me. I was a very sharp boy. I was always top of the class, always a teacher's pet, always getting in trouble, always getting away with it. Yeah, that's the sort of story of my school days. Most people have bigger, heavier pipes that get too much smoke, but this is a nice little light one. Usually what I do is I just break a little bit off a cigarette, like that. And uh, put tobacco into the pipe. So, we'll head back to the camp where it's not quite so noisy and damp. This is the lounge. It's a nice little area if you click. You're up above the creek a little bit and you can look down on the glow room colony. Yeah, it's a great place to sing and the acoustics are incredible. Freedom's just another word for nothing left to lose and nothing. Ain't nothing, honey, if it ain't free. Yeah. It's an old classic, yeah. Probably not something you guys would have heard before. Are you an optimistic person? Optimistic? Hmm. I did go through a lot of depression and stuff when I was younger, learning about um, you know the dark side of life. I had suffered a lot of anger and things, but the Lord's brought peace to me. I'm happy here. Yeah. Optimism is Mm, probably not strong enough a word for what I have. It wasn't a conscious decision on my part. Uh, I was guided, you know, I was lost, confused. One foot in front of the other, I came here. Did you just start walking? Well, I was hitchhiking as well, so I got a couple of rides, but yeah. Now coming here was uh, uh, giving up on the world and everything and coming to a place where I could be healed. This area here is... Uh, one that I made for lounging about at the moment, so I can get. Right. But uh, yeah, and uh, when it's dry, it's a great place to lie down in, uh, in the bush. Yeah. yeah so. What do you What do you think about when you lie here? Women. You know, I'm looking for cave women. <laughs> okay. So we're coming into the camp now. Yeah. Uh, I'll stop here. I'll set up this little camp area here at the end of the track because it's easy to get to and there's a beautiful view. Do you get lonely living by yourself? Yes, that's why I want a cave woman. Yeah. <laughs> Preferably more than one. <laughs> but uh, no, I'm, I'm happy by myself. Yeah. Uh, it would be nice if more people came to join in the, the nature thing and to share it, you know, building the pizza oven. I can see it becoming popular, yeah, other people might want to come out and join me. So what I'm building here is a Manuka fired pizza oven. And then on top of it, when it's finished, will be a little open fire. So
similar to the one that's on top of the thing that I can cook espressos on here. So we've got espresso and pizza in the bush. Would you call yourself a recluse now? Uh, I'd say that I'm coming out of reclusion. Uh, 10 years of living in the cave and now I'm feeling strong enough and healthy enough that I want to share. So is that the healing you've done in the bush? A lot of it's been emotional and, and intellectual as well, you know. Addiction is uh, something that I do have to be careful about. So have you struggled with addiction before? Yep. Until 10 years ago when I first came here, then I decided to make a complete break from any sort of uh, drugs. And so where do you get this food? Uh, things come from the food bank and from friends. Uh, they have a free stuff table at the uh, food bank and I get all sorts of odd things from there. Oh god, that's good. You, you appreciate it so much more when you have to go to all this effort to, to make a cup. And so what's that? Just hot water? That's a cup of tea with sugar, yeah. Do you still see friends and family from before you moved into the cave? Uh, friends, yes, but my family I was estranged from for 25 years. My mother passed away and, and my brother committed suicide when he was 32. Do you have any children? Uh, I have a son who's in, uh, with his, living with his mother. I figured later in life, you know, he, he will wonder about me or uh, this is the opportunity there. Certainly his childhood was very special to me. And, and I didn't want to have to, to break it up, but when it comes to it, you know, you've got to do what you've got to do, uh, get out of a bad situation. I'm still young, I think I can have more children yet. Mm. All I need is a cave woman or two. Would you like to have children? <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, cave babies. I think this would be a great place for children to grow up, yeah. Do you think more people should live like you do? Oh. I think you're the next one to come out and join me, Noah, you know? <laughs> Strip off your bank account and, and, and lose the address and go and live in a cave. You'll love it. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're not going to. You're going to finish your university studies like uh, most people would do. What would you say to someone who wants to come find you or live like you do? Try. <laughs> yeah, I'm not easy to find, uh, but it's, it's worth it if you can. Yeah. It took us three attempts. Took you three times to find me, but uh, I'd say to anybody, you know, uh, if you want to break out from the mould and be in a more natural environment like I am, it's, it's got to be good for you.